Let's talk about Miguel Sano. I basically feel like I have to have like a trigger warning uh, <laughs> before getting into him. We're going to try to keep things fair to him and not bring uh, too much baggage to the table here, uh, which I think is difficult. And that's why I haven't talked about Miguel Sano a lot on the channel here. I've been kind of done with the guy for a while. I think most Twins fans uh, probably are kind of feeling the same. But you know what? This is a guy who is... You know, one of the players we know is going to be back next year. He's under contract and he's playing extremely well right now of late for the twins. So I think with anybody else, we'd be getting hyped about this run that he's on. You can see the numbers here. Uh, he's getting progressively better. The top line is April and May. Middle line is June through August. And then I also just broke down the last 50 plate appearances. Everything is trending in the right direction. So you have to feel good about how Miguel Sano has been going about his business in particular in those last 50 plate appearances, always with Sano, we don't know how much we can trust this because he'll be looking good and then we'll see him look like he's never played baseball before. And that's just sort of the way that it's gone with him up and down. So it, I can definitely see where it's difficult to try to sort of not bring up the past with him <laughs> and focus on going forward. Um, but I think, you know, where this team is right now, uh, in this kind of limbo, obviously 2021, they're terrible, but I think they're going to try to compete next year. And I think Miguel Sano is just fine in the, in the picture of what the twins are going to be trying to doing Miguel Sano as a extremely high variance player. We see him making some great plays in the field there. What getting people to wonder out, can he play third again? No, no, he can't even handle pop-ups still. So, you know, we can't get all the way back in on Miguel Sano, but remember DH is Possibly not going to be filled, uh, you know, depending on what the Twins do in the offseason. So that might be an opening for Miguel. But if Miguel Sano can stay hot for a, a longer period of time than we've seen the past couple of years, he could be an absolute force. And I want to be fair about that because I believe that. I, I, I wouldn't put money on it happening. <laughs> Part of this stance is also just because the Twins are going to have so much else to do this offseason if they're going to try to compete uh, they need to grab a shortstop. They're going to need to rebuild almost the entire pitching staff. So just sort of putting Miguel in the corner for the offseason and saying, all right, we got to do what we think we can get DH and first base at bats from. Hopefully we get the best of them, but we're, we're going to put them there and we're going to focus on this other stuff. I think that's basically going to be a necessity, whether you like it or not. Unfortunately, they can, there's only so much that they're going to be able to accomplish in one offseason. The way they have his contract structured where next year he's actually making less than he did this year. Um, I think that's he's worthwhile keeping around. I also don't think his trade value is much anyway. It's not like the twins can capitalize on, on trading him now. And some may that may change over these last couple months here, depending on how well he plays having that $14 million option in 2023, or, you know, if that gets declined, he's going to hit free agency. So one way or another, this guy is going to be extremely motivated. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for checking this out. Please consider subscribing for more Twins Talk here on YouTube.